Hi there, this is Kimberly. Um, in this video, I'm going to show you sort of a best practices for downloading your images uh, using Bridge. And this will really help you with your file management and it also will help you to um, convert your files in one batch process to DNG files, that's a di digital negative, and you'll convert those from the proprietary raw format that your uh, images will be created in on your camera. So I'm gonna start by launching Bridge, and I have Bridge open here on my desktop. And then what I'm going to do is insert an SD card into either a card reader, or in my case on my Mac, I have a little card reader slot on the back of my computer, so I have in, uh, I've inserted my SD card. And I'm going to do one of two things. I can either hit this little button that's right up here, which is the Get Photos from Camera button, or I can do File, Get Photos from Camera. It doesn't matter which you choose, either way it gets you to the same place. Now when you go to download, you will have something that looks like this the first time you do it. And you don't want to keep it into this mode. What we want is actually a more advanced mode with a few options. So when you get this dialog box, you're going to click right here onto the advanced dialog. And that will give you a larger dialog box with a few more options than are available in that basic dialog box. So again, I clicked on this advanced dialog and here I have a menu that will help me with some options. Now, because of the way that my um, Canon 5DS formats the card, I have two possible cards to pick, even though it's not one, even though one is insult inserted, excuse me. So I'm going to um, just select one of them, and it will show me thumbnails of all the images that are on my card. Um, and so if I don't want to download all the images, I can simply uncheck the boxes of any images that I don't want to have, okay? And anything that is checked, it will download. If you want to only select a few things, you could click on this uncheck all and simply check the one or two images that you want. And if you want to make sure you have everything, you can ch click check all, which is, by the way, the default position. It assumes you would want to download everything. In this case, I, I don't really want any of these pictures, so I'm just going to hit uncheck all, and I'll just, for the purposes of example, I'm just going to download a couple of pictures. Um, over here, there's some other controls, and it's really important to pay attention to all of these because you want to know sort of how you're handling your file, how you're naming your file, where you're placing your file, etc. I'm working on a Mac, but if you're working on a PC, it's essentially going to work the same way. The first thing it wants to know up here is where is it that I'm going to place my, my photos during the download process. And so I'm going to choose a location. So I'm going to click the choose here. And in this case, it's just a test. So I'm going to go to my desktop and I'm going to make a new folder and I'm going to call this demonstration. If I can type properly, it'll really help. And I'll click create and open. So now I've selected that folder. And then I have some options for subfolders. By default, Adobe wants to make a subfolder based on the shot date for every image in your, on your SD card. So let's say, for example, you'd gone on vacation and you'd taken photographs every day for a week. It would make you seven subfolders, one for each day of the week. Personally, I find that to be frustrating. I don't like to have a million subfolders. I just like to put them all in one folder. So in my case, I'm going to choose none, but certainly if you want to uh, sort them by shot date, you may. If you ignore that and suddenly notice you have a million subfolders, you'll know why you didn't, you accidentally left create subfolders on. Where it says rename files here, what I like to do is I like to go ahead and rename them with a custom name. And the custom name I use is basically a naming structure that I use for all my files. Now the way I do it might not make perfect sense to you. You might have a different way of doing it, but I find that it's much more useful to have a name on my file and a number than it is to have the arbitrary series of letters and numbers that the camera um, assigns as it's shooting. So again, in this case, I'm just gonna type test, and I'm gonna start here with number one, and as it downloads them, it will make the files test one, test two, test three, test four, instead of whatever it is that the uh, camera has assigned as a name, which is meaningless to me. Then you'll see that there are some advanced options here. One of them is to open Adobe Bridge after download, which is by default checked. I like that. That means as soon as all the images are downloaded, it opens that folder in Bridge so I can view my images. And the other one that's really useful is right here where it says convert to DNG. 
Now, I'm not going to talk extensively about DNG in this video, but DNG stands for digital negative. And if you have shot raw files, now it doesn't make much sense to do this if you've shot JPEG files, but if you've shot raw files, you may want to use this option. It'll take an extra minute for your images to download, but it will take those what are called proprietary raw format files and it will convert them to DNG, digital negative format, which is a more accessible, easily readable um, file format that Adobe supports. Um, the reason for this too is that as the software updates, you know you're not going to run into any conflicts with your camera having some kind of a now non-supported version of a raw file. It doesn't happen often, but it does happen. So I'm going to go ahead and convert to DNG. And I'm not even going to bother changing the settings here. The default settings are just fine. I don't want to go too deep down the DNG rabbit hole. But suffice it to say, if you convert to DNG, you're sort of assured that going forward, you're always going to be able to open your files and you won't have any conflict, raw file conflicts there. There's two more fields down here that can be really useful to fill out, a creator field and a copyright. So for the creator, I'm going to type my name. And for the copyright, I am also going to type my name. Okay, and I could put reproduction prohibited or something like that, but I'll just put my name for the copyright here. The reason there's a creator field and a copyright is perhaps someone has hired me to do a photo series or, or some kind of a shoot, and I've created it, but they're going to hold the copyright. In this case, all the images I make, or I both make them and I hold the copyright, so I'm simply going to type my name in twice. What it will do with the name is it will place it into the metadata of the raw file so that my copyright is embedded into the raw file, which for my mind is, is a good thing to do. Now that I've filled all of these things out, I'm going to hit Get Media. And I'm only downloading three files, so it's only going to take a moment here. But if you had a full card, it would take an extra minute, especially if you're converting to DNG, which does delay it slightly. And now I've gone to this folder. You can see my two very, my very thrilling test images here. But you can see that I have test 1 DNG, test 2 DNG, and test 3 DNG. And they've been downloaded here. Uh, onto my uh, computer and now I'm ready to edit and move forward. So I'm going to stop the video here with the download and convert to DNG and I'll pick up with the next video talking about some basic raw edits.